Biotechnology has over the years gained widespread international acceptance as a science that would help in uh, helping Africa establish a level of food security in order to overcome things such as drought and pestilence. We're now joined by Dr. Rachel Shikwamba who's going to talk to us about uh, Biotechnology, she's a specialist in genetics and plant breeding at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Okay, this is quite a sim complicated one, and I want us to simplify the text because there's this huge agrarian drive for Africa, which is a net producer, and trying to find cost effective best practices for getting agricultural products to market and to the people who need it the most. What are the pros and cons of biotechnology? Thank you for having me, Lerato. Um, the pros for biotechnology are obviously related to the potential to increase the quantum of food, the amount of food that we can produce on the same land that we are currently using to wow. produce food. And additionally and secondarily, the ability to actually improve the quality of the food that we actually have. So those are the biggest strengths um, of biotechnology. And in fact, they do have a very, biotechnology does have a very strong potential impact on uh, the economies mm -hmm. in the sense that it can reduce costs of production. It can increase income in the farming sector, right. especially in the small holding farming communities in Africa, and therefore can alleviate poverty. And what about the cons? Because we're told that it could change the basic characteristics of staple foods such as maize or sorghum or millet. Okay. Looking at the cons, we have had more than a decade of consumption of GM foods globally and to date there is no known adverse health effects that can be attributed to biotechnology and i think this has been very made clear in recent reports commissioned by um in 2005 by the fao and one of the things that uh, people worry about is that there could be adverse health effects so far there haven't been any other concerns include environmental impacts of these genes or transgenes going into wild and weedy relatives. And uh, in as far as we've seen biotechnology go now, we have not seen any untoward effects. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the quality or the ingredient of the food, biotechnology foods are subjected to such rigorous safety standards beyond what conventional food actually is subjected to. And so far there are not any indications that there is any untoward effects. Okay, are African farmers receptive to the idea of biotechnology? Because I know essentially it means that they change from using hybrid seed components in their farming to something else. Okay, well, I think that the farmers per se, when educated about the benefits will adopt the technology readily. And cases in point, obviously, are things such as uh, insect-resistant maize in South Africa and BT cotton, which is insect pest-resistant cotton in South Africa as well. So farmers necessarily would adopt these technologies if they were educated about them. And sorry, I just lost my train of thought. They were but okay, I just wanted questions. to know if farmers were receptive to the idea. And you're saying that if they were better educated, they would understand the, the, the benefits more. What are their superstitions? What are their sensitivities at the moment? Their sensitivities are basically based on the lack of knowledge to say, would these technologies harm them in the first place? Wish they wouldn't, at least as I said, the decade of growing these crops has not done so. And then the second thing is to adapt these technologies such that they are suitable to the farming systems right. that our small scale developing farmers work in. So for example, they're used to saving seed and keeping seed for themselves and replanting that over the years. Whereas these crops come in hybrid formats that require necessarily that they buy seeds and inputs every year mm -hmm. in order to be able to use them effectively. So what we as African scientists need to do is to innovate in such a way that we adapt these technologies to suit the farming systems of the African farmers. Okay, so obviously in order for this to be successful, there needs to be a cost factor that needs to be assessed because they're gonna be buying the seed each year. Mm -hmm. Apparently you need fertilizer to enhance the farming process. And uh, in countries like Malawi, you've seen the government subsidize fertilizers and that's helped to push up crop yields but that's not necessarily the case in the rest of Africa so essentially it may be environmentally uh, friendlier to move the biotechnology way but it's probably going to be more expensive. 
Well, the statistics to date show that by actually adopting some of the biotech crops, the farmers have realized reduced costs of production in the sense that they can practice low tillage, minimum tillage practices. They can also not have to put in so many pesticide control measures mm -hmm. that are costly. And in fact, costs of production have been known to be reduced by as much as 56%. So to me, while the increase in seed, seed costs is high, it is offset by the benefits in yields and reduction right. of cost of production. Kobe has a question. Okay, um, I mean, Rachel, it's, 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 it's really, really interesting. Um, and I think this is a great, great story for Africa because if you look at the whole situation around um, uh, genetically modified crops and so on. I think the, the knock-on effect or the, 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 the other situation that you could be sitting in is that, that you could ask the world if they want to starve. Because without actually having genetically modified crops, what is the other outcome for the world? I mean, is there, is there a way that we could feed the world in a continuously increasing population in the world mm -hmm. um, on a continuous basis with the crops that we have without going genetically modified? That's very pertinent you raise that point, Kobe, because when you look at the trends globally right now, we're having increasing populations, we're having increasingly arid crop production environments, and we cannot afford to continue to cut down forests in order to increase the surface area that we subject to um, agriculture. Therefore, what we need is to be able to enhance the productivity per hectare of the land that is currently in production right now. We need to also enhance the quality of the food that we're actually growing right now. And biotechnology seems to offer the tools that can assist us or aid us in doing this speedily right. and meeting the rapidly changing climate, rapidly increasing global populations. But Rachel, what about the response from African governments? A few years ago, when there was a drought in Southern Africa, we saw donors coming in with uh, maize products that governments accused donors of dumping genetically modified foods that were not uh, up to regulatory standards in the US, dumping them on Africans. So mm -hmm. there is still the sensitivity mm -hmm. around, around GM foods. Okay, there is indeed sensitivity around GM foods, but I would like to just note that in the US, they have been consuming genetically modified food for the past at least 10 years, almost um, more than that now. And uh, if you look at it, this corn that they were offering as food aid is the same corn that they use for making high fructose corn syrup, the same corn that they use for making corn oil, and they consume that. So they're giving us something that they have consumed for more than 10 years without any negative effects. And because perhaps we don't have enough information or we are sensitive about what our peers, our neighboring governments would think of us for receiving this, then we don't perhaps take the decisions that are most prudent to our populations. But the thing to decide is not to use the standards of countries in the West that have so many options around food to actually um, make policy decisions right. for ourselves, when in fact we can make judicious right. decisions for ourselves. Okay, let's talk about the way influence. forward. Uh, apparently, information sharing is available in gene banks, mm -hmm. uh, trying to pull the various seed uh, variants that are available, and mm -hmm. already they're using that in Rwanda and Ethiopia and in some Southern African countries. How useful have these gene banks been, and how much more uh, research and investment and time is needed in establishing them in Africa? Well, to date, what has happened that is significant is, is the establishment of the gene banks themselves, in the sense that they conserve the diversity of the crops that we can grow in Africa. What we now need to do is to add value by mining that gene genetic diversity, taking that diversity and using it with the aid of biotechnology techniques to enhance productivity of the crops.